And welcome back to Mindset Monday. You're here with the Zanetti Brothers from Wrestling Mindset. We're excited to bring you our weekly podcast. Jeff, what do we have with Joe Galli and Dan Gable? Galli and Gable, our last coaches convention, which was historic. We had over 1,800 people sign up. We, we raised thousands of dollars for Beat the Streets. And today we're talking about Galli and Gable. Thousands of dollars plus $1,000. We just spoke to Spartan CEO Joe Desen, and he's about to pay up. We had to do 1,000 burpees to get the money. A thousand burpees for a thousand bucks. So plus a thousand coming to beat the streets. I can't think of two better people to start our clinic in terms of motivation and energy than Joe Galli and Dan Gable. Let's start up with a quick clip from uh, from Joe Galli, CEO of Milwaukee Tools, Tektronic Industries, Ryobi, about a dozen other brands. He is he is one of a kind. I'm gonna share here quick and then we're gonna get it going. Here we go. Joe Galli. Napoleon always said the side that stays within its fortifications is beaten. Um, attack, attack, attack. Uh, and for me, you know, why win in overtime 3-2 if you can go out and take the guy down and pin him? Um, you, you know, uh, uh, the aggressive wrestler is the most fun to watch. And, you know, I, I think um, it's a philosophy that works in wrestling, in war, and in business. Enough said. Attack, attack, attack. We actually had a coach in high school who had the opposite, well, one of our personal coaches, and he would say, don't pin him until the second period. And looking back, we found that that was wrong. That's the opposite of Sun Tzu, the art of war. You you delivered the death blow as quickly and decisively as possible. That's right. And Joe Galli exemplifies that. So last year he came on our clinic. I think Milwaukee Tools, the, the parent brand, Tektron, Tektronic Industries, they were at $7.5 billion. He said on the call, he said, COVID or not, we're hitting $9 billion this year. He put, it, he put his goal on the line. He said it out loud. And sure enough, not only did they hit the goal, but they shattered it. Almost $10 billion this year. If you want to be a multimillionaire, give us one of these on YouTube. Give us the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you get the weekly notification. But, yeah, absolutely. Here's a guy who's a multi-billionaire. Let's face it. He's, he's losing time. I don't know about a multi-billionaire. Multi-billion dollar company. Right. But – Here's a guy who's actually losing time and money by being on our show. He didn't have to be on the show. I mean, Gable, I understand. He's trying to promote wrestling. So for him, we were the biggest event that week. Dan Gable was there. And, and it really was historic having thousands of people on, uh, having 1,875 people signed up and have it raising thousands of dollars for Beat the Streets, plus the big one from Joe DeSena. So that was a, that was a good one. Well, I think and, it's, it's volumes about both of them, really. Coach Gable... And Joe Galli, they don't need to be there, right? Financially, they're secure, right? Their legacy is safe, but they're here because they want to grow wrestling, right? They want to promote the sport. And, um, you know, they're, they're, um, they go above and beyond to do it. So we're, we're grateful to have had both of them on the, on the leadership clinic. And that's just two out of 31 speakers. So let me go through the stats really quick before we get back into things. So the stats on the 2021 Wrestling Mindset Leadership Clinic. We had 31 speakers and over 16 hours of content. Over 1,800 coaches that were registered for the clinic. Unbelievable. Seven Olympic gold medalists on the call uh, presenting. Over 40 NCAA team titles between Division I, Division II, and Division III. We had people of all levels. Uh, Beat the streets donations, like Gene said, over 2,500 plus 1,000 pledged by Spartan CEO Joe DeSena. And we just went through some of the reviews, polled um, hundreds of people, and it was 9.5 out of 10 average rating. So we're we're thrilled to be able to throw this this huge leadership clinic and to just serve the wrestling community. And we got a lot of content upcoming with with everything that happened in the last week. Yeah, these next couple shows will probably be all dedicated towards lessons learned and and just cool things that we saw during the whole thing. I mean, Joe Galli. One thing you could say about him when I think of him, I first think make America great. And we're not talking about politics here or anything, but in other words, he's a promoter. Obviously, Trump's a promoter. Joe Galli is a promoter. And, and you could just see he brings the energy, brings the heat every time. And he even says, you're gonna, either going to leave your employees more or less motivated. And that's his line, right? Or is that Tom Ryan? That was him. That was him. No. He said when you go into a business meeting, he's like, it's binary. Either the employees, your contractors, whoever it is, they're coming out either more motivated or less motivated. And he talked about wrestling coaches, even the best wrestling coaches. When people are cutting weight, when they're tired, they're still able to motivate their athletes you know, during those difficult times. And the same thing goes in business. And that's not an easy thing to do. 
if you can see, he brings the heat, but he backs it up. Like Abel's always talking about attack, 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 even if you're winning a match to keep the throttle down. And Joe Galli, here's a guy who is a $7 billion company, and he's still thinking, I mean, his whole talk was take chances, attack, make it happen, let, let other people play. The bold. That was a quote that I wrote down. So in his presentation, he said, fortune favors the bold. And he talked about either slide. It said incrementalism versus breakthroughs. And incre incrementalism, he was saying, is you have a nine and nine wrestler who says, you know, I'm going to put some time in and next year I'm going to go 15 and, and five. He said, no, breakthroughs are I'm going to go from nine and nine to 25 and zero. I'm going to go from seven and a half billion to ten billion dollars. And, you know, he said that's how he runs his company. That's how wrestling coaches should be training their team. That It's not just incrementalism. We want to have breakthroughs each year. And, and then I understand why we had coaches then that stepped in and said, whoa, like, Go from nine to nine to twenty-five and zero. Oh, that's not really realistic, and and I get it. It's not. That's not really realistic. Um, okay, like yeah, the one year I had a, the, I had a tough weight class. My freshman year, I was seven and ten, and then went to twenty-one and six my my sophomore year. But it wasn't like I became a state champ right away. So, and they were saying like, well, what about kaizen, which is the Japanese philosophy of constant improvement? Well, the the point is here with Joe Gala is high level people are looking at not just small jumps but making big jumps now of course they're fine with making small jumps but th but they're always thinking that that 80 20 pareto's principle what's the what's the least i could do to yield the greatest results and then not doing the least but doing the most and it gets even more results so yeah kaizen of course all the way but malcolm gladwell he talks about the tipping point the j if you look at the graph a lot of times the, the when when successful trends tip it's a j in other words, it doesn't go up um, gradually and constantly. It gets to a certain point, and then boom, it goes basically straight up. So that's what he's really talking about there. I think he's getting at just thinking big. You know, don't don't limit yourself by setting a ceiling, right? Instead of saying I'm going to go 15 and five next year, I'm going to go 25. You know, maybe I don't hit that goal, but I'm shooting for it, right? I'm aiming big. If people aren't laughing at your goals, then they're probably not high enough. We've always right. believed that as mindset coaches. Exactly. If you have to think, you got to think anyway, right? So you might as well think big. But but there you, you still have some people, they'll use it as a cop out. They'll say, well, I, I just can't do that. I can't reach that high of a goal. So they'll, they, they'll say, well, I'm not going to set that. But I, like you said, I think it really comes down to more being being realistic, but not letting realis, realism hamper you. Like you can do big things and the people who are aiming to do big things will do them, even if it's not going 25 and 0, but they're the one who's more likely to go whatever, like we said, the 21 and 6. Yeah, and that kind of gets into understanding each athlete because there are going to be some athletes, right? You could say, we're going 25-0 and 0 next year, and they respond to that. We're going to be a state champ. We're going to be a national champ. But some people, you need to push them a little bit slower. We are going to win one more match, and then we're going to get better. We're going to improve here. And so understanding your athletes, there's really no substitute for that. And that was a topic of Coach Gable's presentation. I remember Joe Gala had it written down here. He said, leaders need to be mentored. Right. So he said there's there's just no substitute. You have to put in time to understand the athletes, understand your employees. And, um, you know, not there's no cookie cutter approach. Yeah, Gable spoke to the kids, girlfriends. He was saying he spoke to their parents. He spoke to their friends, their roommate. I mean, Gable is just digging for information and saying there was always something to be learned. We talk about this with our short term goals. Like we, we divide it down, of course, like most people, there's long term goals, there's short term goals. When it when it comes to motivating people depending on what area it might be different in school than in sports or, or versus career. But some people get more motivated on a day-to-day -day basis, focusing on the long-term goal. Like for wrestling, they might like our brother, Greg was like that. He, he was national champ. He was a guy who was like ranked in the top 10 in the state. And he was thinking NCAA champ in college. And that motivated him every day. Uh, other people that might totally demotivate them. And they, they, they may be or better off focusing on the short-term goal of, you know, be a varsity be a varsity wrestler or win like two more matches, but that might be different. That might switch now in school, maybe in school, maybe our brother wouldn't have been as motivated as summa cum laude in college, but maybe it's make the honor roll this marking period to That's be right. sensitive to that. So one of the things coach Gable said was that he had his athletes fill out forms to understand them better. Right. And he said that, you know, even just how much they put into that, how much time did they put into that? You know, what did they write? How much, what was just the, the quantity of the text they wrote, that tells you something about the athletes. But then he also said, you can't take every answer seriously, right? Right, there's a, there's a certain gestalt in psychology, they call it, where the, the picture fits. So if there's, in other words, if they're saying something, but, but their behavior is incongruent, 
there's not a just stall. There's not a, there, it's not, it's not congruent. So you're looking for, if there is an inconsistency, if they're saying they don't need to be motivated, but they're slacking off, maybe they do need to be motivated. So, but, but the key thing is don't use that as coaches, as an excuse not to do that questionnaire in the beginning. And that's what we provide our mindset coaches guide, uh, self-knowledge week 10. We have exactly what questions the athletes what, what the coaches, what the athletes should a- answer about their coaches. And that becomes an ongoing conversation because, yeah, go ahead, what were you going to say? I was going to say, Gable had a story about one of his athletes who was saying that basically he wanted to impress Gable, right? And it's like yeah. he knows that he is, he's the goat in the sport. We all know that, right? He's, he's the icon in wrestling. So he wanted to say, yeah, he's motivated. He's just like Gable. He doesn't need to be coached up too much. He's like, yell at me from time to time. And then he found out that the guy wasn't he wasn't getting as much as he could out of out of the athlete. And then he finally had a meeting with that guy and he said that actually I need all kinds of coaching. You know, I need to be motivated. You know, I need to be my hands got to be held more. And he was honest with Coach Gable. And he said that made the difference between him being a several time All-American. The next year, I think he won the Nationals by <laughs> by major decision. Yeah. And that, that would also be a difference. That That's also where the mindset coach would come in because Gable asking that question, do you need me to motivate you? It's more of a closed ended question. There's a difference between open ended and closed ended questions. And I get why Gable did that. And again, it puts him ahead of everyone else by not asking those questions. But like the five questions we ask, I'll go through them. Number that's, one, that's what I was going to ask. What, yeah. what do we ask in our mindset guide? Coach mindset. So, so when they're when they're thinking about their relationship with their coach, we do this with their coach and we do this with their parents. We, in other words, we ask the athlete on a private call. We do. We ask the same five questions of them about their coach and about their parent. And then the idea is after the call, they sit down and they review those answers with the coach and then separately with the parent. So the questions are, number one, what is my coach doing that helps me mentally? Or if it's a freshman, you might say, what what are things that coaches have done in the past that have helped me mentally? You want to get them thinking about that. And you might even throw out some examples. Number two, what are some things that my coach is doing or currently has done that have hurt me mentally inadvertently because I'll pull it up here too while you're going. Go ahead. Because obviously the coach or the parent is not trying to hurt you mentally, but there's certain things a coach or parent will do that'll hurt you mentally, whether it's for any anyone watching it at home, anyone who's on our YouTube show, not the podcast. Yeah. There you go. Those are the five questions we have. So what are, what are my, what's my coach doing that helps me mentally? What are they doing that's hurting me mentally? This is the parent mindset guide, but it's the same thing. And then if you notice questions three, four, and five, we have those as multiple choice. Now, the reason why we do that is because we know the answer most athletes will tend to give, and we want to show the other possibilities that the athlete is not choosing. In other words, I want the parent to see in question oh, four. Yeah, here's the coach's one. Yeah, Almost so, identical. Yeah. yeah, so in question four, how do, how, how do I want my coach to treat me before a match? Question four, where the first one is fire me up, get me mad, slap me in the face. Now, we know Gable did that with some of their athletes. Most wrestlers don't want that. So, but a lot of parents and a lot of coaches will sometimes try to overly fire up their athletes. We have that listed as an option. So when the coach sees that the athlete did not select that, now it also makes the coach aware, okay, the athlete doesn't want this. Right. And the other things might be the other options might be talk to me about things other than the sport. Give me technical feedback, which most most kids usually don't want technical feedback right before the match. Other than joke sit- around, joke around. Yep. Yeah. Like like Joey McKenna liked the technical feedback from Jeff Buxton when he was a player. But it was more like move your feet. Right. Keep it. Keep your feet. That's not really technical. Like, hey, make sure you do this and make sure you do that. A lot of kids don't like that. So we have those questions. Oh, the other one is. Uh, basically gauging your sensitivity sensitivity level. How do you want your coach to critique you? Very blunt, direct, straightforward, um, a little bit more sensitive or very sensitive. The key is the athlete needs to understand their level you, of sensitivity. You can, you can see he's got a good memory and he got that right. He's, he's went with a, few t- with a few people, a few teams. <laughs> That's right. So we have all that. If anyone wants that sheet, we could send that on over to you. Just send us an email. Mindset at wrestlingmindset.com. We'll send that. We'll kick that on over to you. All right. Well, one thing I wanted to get on the record. So we talked about working, you know, customizing your program, customizing your system for certain athletes, right? So the Lou Bannock story, that I thought that was a good one. I'll let, I'll let Gene share that. But Lou is actually one of our presenters, also his brother, Ed. They're both Olympic champs. And um, that was one of the situations where Gable had to come up with a separate plan. Uh, a lot of people don't know Lou Bannock actually quit wrestling for a short period of time and then 
Gable kind of had a plan to get him back on the team. And uh, I guess he was an Olympic champ, so it must have worked out. Yeah, pretty much Lou Bannock. He was he was not he was the kind of guy that he didn't need to be run into the ground. He he needed shorter workouts, very intense. Don't get me wrong, but he said he didn't need a lot of wrestling matches. He said he needed about 20 minutes of wrestling, 20 minutes of drilling, and then one live match. Something to that effect. Don't quote me exactly. Watch the video for that. We'll we'll throw that link in the show notes. But but nonetheless, he he would do a very intense personal workout while the team was practicing. And now remember, this is a guy who was in college who was already an All-American. So it wasn't like this is a, this is someone who had no success at all. Um, as you get older and as you get more successful, you have the earn you earn the right a little bit more to to have more of a say in how you're coaching. I mean, you should how you're being coached. Now you should always. It's good to communicate with your coaches on a regular basis, anyway. How you're feeling, what, and a lot of our coaches said this on the coaching convention. You know, speak speak regularly on how you're feeling and 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 what could be done. But you earn the right a little bit more to kind of say what goes, or to ask not to say what goes, but to ask more what would work more for you. Um, Lou Bannock asked the coach. Coach said, well, we have to poll the team. We have to ask the team. Otherwise, we can't just let you do your own thing. The team ultimately voted and decided that Lou Bannock could do his own thing. And in fact, one of the athletes, one of his teammates said, hey, I, I want to do what Lou does. I don't want to go through the Iowa practice. I don't want to go through the Gable practice. Well, long story short, he tried to keep up with Lou Bannock one, once, one day, and he said, I'll go back to the Gable practice. <laughs> so in other words, Gable knew that he was working hard. It wasn't just an excuse to let Lou Bannock you know, do whatever. So that's, that's the key that, that coaches, I think, who are more attuned to their athletes and thinking about their needs, they're going to have more success. I remember when we were at, when we were at um, Penn, I think this is why I was getting my master's at LaSalle. I was in Philadelphia. I'd come back to the Penn room. And I remember um, one of the assistant coaches there was saying like, oh, I can't believe it. Rob Cole isn't having his guys get up for 7 a.m. workouts. And I remember thinking like, that's a, that's a great thing because most, most college wrestlers are not cut out for the morning. Like they're just staying up late. Of course, we'd like them all to go to bed earlier. And, and Zeke would, when Zeke Jones is our coach in college, he would set the morning workouts, but guys were still coming in groggy. And I think coach Cole understood that even if it might not be the most optimal thing, optimally, the guys will get up early in practice. The best thing to do is kind of work with the natural rhythms and uh, not, of course, all the time, Rob Cole made his guys get up early from time to time, of course, sure. but not an all the time thing. Let them sleep. Let them recover, and guess what? He got better results out of this, the guys. I mean, Cornell, no doubt about it, was peaking, and a lot of times I felt like some of, some of our Penn teams were, were falling a little bit flat for a few years, and then, you know, with obviously some years better than others. That's right. All right, we don't have a ton of time left. I wanted to finish with uh, the closing message from, from the legend, the icon in wrestling, Dan Gable. It's, uh, let's, let's play it here, about a minute clip. People that are listening to this, I just want you to know, you need to do extra right now for this sport because the last couple years, even though you probably haven't missed a beat, there are a lot of kids that have missed the beat of our sport because of the last two years. And I'm sure that there's a lot of leaders in this country that wouldn't care that if they missed a beat for about wrestling, but I care, you care. And the United States cares the world cares because we're all over the world and we just have to be more tuned in to taking our sport to another level. That's right. You heard from coach Gable. We got to do more, not a surprising message from, from the legend, right? Right. Absolutely. And the guy like Joe Gallo, was doing more and that's why he was able to make that transition. Not only was he an ACC champ, um, I think one time ACC champ, maybe three time finalist, but then he took it into business and then started crushing it, making, making a lot of money. So it's, it's a, it's a principle anywhere. Like he said, war wrestling and life. So make sure you keep giving back to the wrestling community. Yes. Uh, I was going to say, let's set the stage for the next episode. So we're going to go through some of our speakers. Like I said, 31 speakers at the leadership clinic. One of them, I'm not sure how many we're going to go through two or three speakers, but one of them is going to be Dr. Michael Yesis, who, um, who wrote the book. It was the secrets of Soviet success. Um, Gable was pumped up about it if, if we kept playing that video a little bit longer. So you got to get the Gable video. He talked about his, the, the Russians, the Soviets helped him a lot. So he was excited when we were announcing our next speaker during the clinic. So we're excited to bring that. Gene, you want to talk a little bit about that quickly, Dr. Yesis? Yeah, doctor. so Dr. Yesis, 
He's an exercise science professor at Cal State Fullerton, or he was. He created a whole program, one by 20 program. I have about seven of his books. I was real excited to interview him for the first time this year. And um, he jumped on our show. We're actually creating a wrestling specific training program. But, but why he's important and why you should care about him is here's a guy who's who studied the English, the, the English, the American model for training. And then when he studied the Russians, he saw they were doing things totally different much more efficient, much more scientific and, and logical. So what he did, he actually learned Russian and he became the editor or the translator from for the Soviet journals, sport, Soviet sports training journals from 1964 to 1994 so, when the Soviet Union collapsed. So 30 years, this man was the American hub for the Soviet sports journals, which most people don't even know existed. In fact, Mike Clayton, the director of USA, Team USA programming for the Olympic team and all of USA wrestling, I called him up after I had a, a conversation with, with Dr. Yesis and said, hey, we need to get all of those journals translated, or not translated because they are translated. We need to get all of that in with Team USA. I went ahead and I bought about 20 different journals that have all wrestling research that talk about how you should recover in between rounds, how to use a sauna, not for cutting weight, but for recovery, um, what the most likely injuries you, you could have in wrestling and how to prevent them, strength training, tendons, plyometrics, all that stuff. So that's a wealth of information. You're definitely going to want to tune into that. We were giving the clinic. The clinic was um, there were free snippets up until Sunday. That's all done now. 40 bucks for the whole thing. That's 14 we'll post, hours worth that's of right. we'll post link. No, th over over 16 hours because there were 16 hours built in, but some people ran over their half hour in multiple rooms. So there's probably closer to 20 hours, if not more, of content. And it's only $39.99. We'll post the links. It's up on Coach2. We partnered with Coach2 for this clinic. They did an awesome job. They helped us. We had tech support. Um, you know, they made it much more professional. So it's just it's a no brainer for, for under 40 bucks. The, the leadership clinic is available there. We'll post the link. And then also a big theme for our, our, um, our clinic was readers are leaders, right? So our, our book is discounted 1499. So you could buy 20 copies for your team for less than 300 bucks, the predator versus prey mindset. And then you have coaches, Tom Ryan's book, chosen suffering, Lee Kemp's book, Jim Miller, do it anyway. Lou Bannock's book. Uh, Dr. Yesis has a book. Carl Adams has a book. We'll talk about probably him also next episode so check out those books predator versus prey mindset obviously that's our book and then the leadership clinic i, I think it's a no-brainer but we're going to keep it rolling going through some of the key topics for each of our presenters we're excited to do it make sure you stay with us next week drop us one of these on youtube give us the thumbs up subscribe hit the bell we're going to be doing this every week this netty brothers giving you great information for a while it's going to be about these coaches conventions we'll and i'm sure we'll, throw, we'll, some we'll, we'll throw some good people in there from time to time too we'll throw some people on our team we'll throw in some of the presenters from the the coaches clinic but um yeah we'll we're fargo fargo too coming up so we'll, we'll hit on that also that's right all right we'll see you next week take care everyone remember whether it's wrestling school or life mindset Makes the difference. Out.